From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. Standing tall in Canindé, in the heart of the Brazilian drylands, is one of the world's largest religious monuments, St. Francis, the saint of the poor. At his feet, ribbons bear witness to millions of destitute pilgrims who've prayed to this revered saint, seeking the miracle of water. The first drought I saw was in 1958. I was 12 years old. Napoleão Fortado, owner of a small farm in the region, has seen firsthand drought's disastrous consequences. The water slowly vanishes. The pastures also vanish. And people see their cattle starve. The drought punishes everything. People, cattle, animals. Drought is not unusual in dry lands around the world. In this arid ecosystem, water is a scarce and precious resource. But since 40% of the earth is dry lands, in which nearly half of the world's food is produced, the farming solutions developed here could help save the planet's food supply. In northeastern Brazil, even though a drought can continue for up to five years, subsistence farming used to be possible. 30 years ago, this whole area was productive. There was more vegetation. There wasn't the erosion we see today. But in the last three decades, things slowly changed, says farmer Francisco Neto. Slash and burn agriculture and unrestrained deforestation impoverish the soil, almost to the point of no return. This region, the size of France and Germany combined, and home to 25 million people, is at risk of becoming a desert. This phenomenon is called desertification, and it's affecting drylands worldwide. In an attempt to tackle water scarcity, the Brazilian government built massive reservoirs, like this one, the largest in Latin America. But because of desertification, dry soil drifted into the reservoirs during the rainy season, and they were slowly disappearing. An initiative partially funded by the World Bank was launched to help keep the reservoirs clean and soon expanded to also help combat desertification. The project's basic concept is to educate farmers on a number of low-cost, time-proven methods of land cultivation, like this ancient technique designed to hold on to water. Another technique creating underground water pockets by inserting plastic barriers into trenches. And finally, replanting trees on essential riverbeds to keep the soil in place. The efforts seem to be working. Streams and watering holes have begun to spring up. Native fauna has returned, and farmers can harvest for many extra months. Leading the charge for the project is Napoleão, who now travels to other communities to share these techniques. The region also hosted an international conference launching the United Nations Decade on Desertification. Here, Napoleão shared his experience with the world. Luc Nakaja, head of the UN Convention to Combat Desertification. What we need to do is to of course, build on the success stories, on the best practices, to upscale them, to disseminate them. What's happening here, many believe, is a lesson for the world, so that, unlike their forefathers, future generations don't depend only on hope and prayer. This report was produced by Camillo Frere for the United Nations.